saw us because we, we got to see the playback afterwards and it was slow motion it was these mountains and it was we were crying and it, that felt really special my little daughter uh, ali was played eleanor in the last shot of the last scene of the last film and that's really special and you know in the bar in the pub with all of us i mean there's there's just uh, this kaleidoscope of things and one of the coolest things is when something that you've that's kind of passed out of memory is brought back to your attention. A crew member that you see when you're back in New Zealand doing a, another film six years later says, oh, do you remember this? And all of a sudden, all the sights and smells and sounds of that experience just come rushing back at you. And, you know, I, I sometimes worry that when I'm very, if I'm lucky to be very old and I'm trying to remember my life, I, ho I hope I can remember all of them or some of them, you know. That's my feeling. That was my favorite answer. <laughs> Is it true that when you were giving the speech on the side of the volcano about it being springtime soon that Peter Jackson came up to you and, and had tears streaming down his face during that speech? Yeah, that was one of the most gratifying. The two, the, the twin, uh, the poles of my experience with Peter Jackson directing me was one day when we were doing Shelob, there's a fight sequence with Shelob, which we seem to do a thousand times. Sometimes with Jeff Murphy, who was one of the other directors, and sometimes with Peter, and sometimes with, uh, there was just different directors all the time, and you'd think, nobody's gonna even see all this footage. I don't know why we're doing it so many different ways. But Peter came in, we did it, and afterwards I went up to the monitor. Sometimes he would come out, and other times you'd go over to him. And, uh, and I went over to him, and I, and I looked at him, and he, he had this kind of, I don't know if he was thinking about something else, or if he was, what was going on, but he looked up at me and he just said, I just didn't believe that. Oh, it was the most like horrifying. I made sure every second of the rest of it, to the best of my ability, that he believed what I was doing. Um, but then the, the other side of that was we were on the. Uh, I had for, again had forgotten about some of the dialogue I got to do, and we woke up at this place called the the Powderhorn, or no, it was the Chateau. Remember the Chateau, the Chateau up on the on the kind of up. Mount Ropehu, where there's a golf course out in front of it, kind of a rich person sort of golf course. They said it was haunted, remember? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this happened. <laughs> I remember uh, the powder horn. The powder horn was the kind of country uh, yeah. ski lodge. Right? But there was another one, was this old chateau, like something out of The Shining that we stayed in for a little bit. It's reeked of marijuana when you came in. And, uh, Maybe that's why I don't uh, remember. Uh, <laughs> So they have these, these sides, the script, they give you every day a miniature version of the script uh, that you look just for, with that day's work in it. And I remember reading it on the way up there and thinking, you know, you sort of went, I went brain dead with all the scripts. You know, the, they would send changes every day and you end up with a stack like this of all the different, you know, additions and, you know, cuts and edits and everything to the script. And I, you know, I don't, I, I just stopped reading them. I couldn't keep up. It was my head was, it was too hard. So. You would, I would look at it, and Sam, I'm pretty easy. I'm, you know, Master Frodo, you know, I just kind of <laughs> do my thing. And the, this one day, uh, it's like in the great, no, 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 which one is it? It's, um, do you remember the springtime? Though? It's, uh, it'll be springtime soon, they will be sowing barley in the lower fields, and it'll be birds nested in the hazel thickets, and uh, something about strawberries and cream, and this whole thing. <laughs> and uh, so, and I'm reading this, and I'm starting to get both so excited that I get to talk and that it's this beautiful poetry and also terrified that I won't remember it. So we got to the kind of halfway house or three quarter way house up the volcano and I'm just running the lines over and over and over and over and over and I get Elijah to run the lines. Well, Elijah's just laying there. So he, you know, he's very nice and he runs them with me about a thousand times and then he looks at me and I get that it's like, okay, let me do it by myself for a little bit. And so I just, I'm just doing it. And like the whole way we, we take this like four, four wheel vehicle all the way up and then you get out and you walk and everybody's carrying film batteries and everything because it's a kind of a joint effort everybody going to the top of the volcano and uh, and, and I'm just doing the lines over and over and over and over and over again and they're figuring out how they see us in the foreground and they've got a blue screen way across the valley and is that necessary how are they gonna use that and the next thing you know it's just about getting dark and every actor knows that what happens is all the technical stuff is what gets played with all day long and in the last two seconds of the day they go okay do the emotional stuff and it's the stuff that everybody's going to remember for the rest of time and anybody who ever watches it and you're like, you've got to do it now. Um, so, and we, st we started doing it and, uh, and we did a take of it and it was just, it was the most satisfying thing and, and crying was just so easy because it was, the, you know, Tolkien has this ability just with certain sounds like home, 
home. It's not this like feeling in your chest. It's time to go home, Mr. Frodo. It's it's the emotion is is in the sound, and uh, and so we did this poetry, and Peter comes around, and tears are streaming down his face, and I was like. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. And finally, it's dark. Everybody's left. There's no cameras. And I'm still doing it, you know. And I'm just trying to get up, and I've got him pinned down doing it over and over again. <laughs> awesome. Right there. Hello. The question was about Space Milkshake. Yeah. Um, yeah, Space Milkshake was great. We made it in Canada. In, in a place that they call Saskatchewan. <laughs> It's, I don't know if it actually exists, but it's, it's cold, and it's, there's a lot of snow, and it's quite flat. Uh, there's some really good restaurants, and then there's the inside of a spaceship in this room. So we went in there, and then we just played for weeks, just four people, and uh, absolutely loved it. It was one of the, the most fun experiences making a movie that I've... Because they had this... I think there was a big American TV show that uh, they'd spent, you know, three million on this set and, and cancelled it. So this guy who'd written the Space Milkshake uh, script uh, bought it for a dollar or something. <laughs> Kept it in storage till he got the money to make Space Milkshake. And then they, they built the whole set in this soundstage. So you went in and everything you touched worked. You know, you put on a switch and a light came on and all that. It was great. It was like being Captain Kirk or something. <laughs> and uh, so we just went in with a script and just, just had a laugh, you know, just making up stuff. Could you repeat that loudly, sir? How was the filming of the chase scene in Fellowship? Like, the oh, the Nazgul chase. Yeah. And where? The Nazgul chase in the uh, Fellowship. Oh, yeah. it was running. It was a lot of running. <laughs> There was a lot of feet. I remember Hobbit feet were flying off all over the place. Is that where we end at Buckleberry Ferry? <coughs> the horse fell off the dock. Is that code for something? Yeah, that's a, that's a drug thing. I, Is that, I don't know what that is. Do, do you means. have any of the horse fell off the dock? <laughs> not right now, not right now. Cops are looking. No, the horse literally fell, you know, the, the, the black rider and the stunt guy on it. And the, the stunt guys had the, the black thing over their face and the hood up and it was very, you know, challenging for them to operate a big, massive horse, and and um, they and the horse fell in the water right off of Buckleberry Ferry there, and and uh, it was thrashing about, and it was dangerous. And I remember Greg was it Greg Bell, Greg Greg the big Greg uh. Greg the big uh, stunt guy punched the horse in the mouth, <laughs> and the horse punched them back. <laughs> No, it settled, the horse got it sort of, oh, okay, everything's fine, and then they kind of let it out of the mucky thing that was in. The other thing I remember is, you know, I had, uh, his accent is flawless. I, you know, I'm an American, and, and uh, so they had to really work with me, and um, to get a West Country sound, um, you know, Samwise Gamgee from the Shire, and, uh, they, and, and Roisin Cardi and Andrew Jack were the two really fantastic expert um, dialect coaches that were with us every second, some of us more than others, Roisin watching and listening to everything I said, and I remember my, my line in the script, and this is one of the first times I got to say anything, and I, my line was, get down. And so, you know, it was, get down, get down, Mr. Frodo, get down. And uh, I remember Roisin coming up to me after one take, and she said, Sean, she was Irish, that one went a little bit, get down. <laughs> oh. Sorry. It was more James Brown than Shire. 